The views expressed on the following program do not necessarily reflect those of WPSL. However, we are the ones that encourage you to like and share them on social media and with all your friends and neighbors because it's time for the Sue Ellen Sanders Show with your friend Sue Ellen Sanders. Welcome to the show. We're so glad you're here, and I'm so glad that Marissa Kappas and Gabby Simpson are with me today. They're both with the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County, and we're going to be talking about they've got a ton of special events that are coming up, um, and we'll be talking about them, and we'll be also talking about some of the programs and, you know, the, the camp stuff is just about over now, right? Uh, Marissa Kappas is, am I saying that right? Yeah. Okay. She's the public relations coordinator, and then Gabby Simpson is the director of donor stewardship. So both of them, you know, generally have to do with spreading the word about events and gathering the money and thanking the people uh, right. for mm-hmm. events. Um, but, uh, here we are on the cusp of back to school Uh, teachers are reporting back to school Um, students will be soon and you've already had a busy summer right that's right we have get a little closer to the mic that's right we have had a pretty busy summer um we have had a ton of field trips we've had a ton of kids all throughout the county coming to us um we're serving close to a thousand meals a day between breakfast and lunch, making sure that our all of our youth throughout San Lucy County get um, their daily meals, their program to have fun, and but to also keep their brains engaged with certain uh, school activities and making sure they make memories to life to last a lifetime. And that's the whole idea, of course, behind the Boys and Girls Club is it's kids, well, everybody really likes to belong, um, but especially young kids like to belong to a club. And as long as they're going to want to belong to something, then this is a, a wonderful, healthy way for them to connect with other kids and also to get a lot of life lessons that they need to have. That's right. Um, Our idea, and one word that keeps coming from our club members when they talk about the club, is they feel like they have a safe place where they belong, where they give the opportunity to learn life skills um, that will help them open doors for other opportunities that they otherwise wouldn't be getting. And the last time I had folks from the Boys and Girls Club here, um, it was... uh, your youth of the year um, who had just come back from competing in at the state level and just won uh, for the state and that was really cool but that just an example of the training and, and when I say training it's not like people are like sitting in classrooms getting training they don't know that they're learning things all the time when they're learning things but that's just an example of what the the young people are learning through boys and girls club and and through the events and you know Gabby you talked about the food or uh, about the food and the fact that you know a lot of people may not be aware or just may not be thinking about the fact that when kids are out of school a lot of them who depend on breakfast and lunch um, being fed a regular uh, square meal as part of their school day they may not have that when they're um, at home and so if they're part of the boys and girls club program they're guaranteed that that's correct. Um, th- this this program is it's it makes a difference in many ways. One, yes, we are covering for those couple of months where the kids are out of school, making sure that they do get the their meal, um, both the breakfast and the lunch. But also, all these meals are being cooked in our own kitchen, 
and a lot of the staff that is helping with that are part of our workforce readiness program. I know, I love how everything connects like that. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Like we have our kids being fed by our old teens yes. that are working in the kitchen, getting those life skills, getting their responsibility and also bringing some money back home so that they don't have to choose between having to go work at some food plays out there not having the opportunity to learn and get some other skills that they need they get everything in one place and they're with their friends and they're having fun and th like you said they're bringing home money as part of the uh, workforce development program that they're working on and also you didn't mention the fact that they're setting this tremendous example for the younger kids that's right so it's a it's a win 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 all over the place and it just makes me feel so warm and fuzzy just even thinking about it so i can imagine you ladies working with it every day and and seeing it seeing the examples of it it's 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 impressive seeing the commitment of the teens seeing the kids enjoying the food that we serve and just seeing the old tight program, like not, not missing one part of it. And all of that coming from also to listening to what our teens are telling us they need, because mm -hmm. that's what the workforce readiness program has really developed on is by listening to what the, the, the needs kids from wanted. the teens were. Yeah. Yes. What, what they wanted. Also, you know, the boys and girls club can't do it all alone. And, the most wonderful, or one of the most wonderful parts about like the workforce program and Youth of the Year is how you involve both businesses and members of the community. You wanna talk about that a little bit? I would love to talk about that and then precisely, and I'm gonna tie in a little bit with um, with what we are gonna bring on with events because right. that's a, this event that we're going to talk about or one of the events we're going to talk about is precisely our largest community event. Um, it brings that other part of this huge village that is in Lucy County and that all put in their little piece to make an impact on our youth and do better for them. So we have the organization and we have the kids and the teens and they're all working in their programs and then we do have all these for-profit for organizations that come and help and then we have all these organ other different organizations that are a part and they want to belong as well to Boys and Girls Club and join in events like the Chili Cook-Off. And the Chili Cook-Off has a long and storied history in St. Lucie mm -hmm. County and um, it's been benefiting uh, the Boys and Girls Club for quite a number of years now. 40 years 40th this year. anniversary. Well, well, 40 year anniversary, but pre previous to that, it was the Exchange Club and it d didn't always benefit Boys and Girls Club. But it's still an incredible thing to think that, that this event has been around for so long. And I would be remiss, and if, uh, if I don't mention it, then Cliff will, but one year I won Top Chili for Ooh, the radio station. Yes. I, wow. I, it was it was a little bit ago, um, so it was it was very rewarding. But businesses like WPSL and WSTU are radio stations, uh, banks, mm -hmm. um, uh, government business business uh, entities. Um, insurance agencies everybody gets involved they put a team forth um and over the years uh, yeah i've been part of chili cook-off when i was the marketing director at harbor federal savings and loan as a bank by the way did we mention that you actually won the chili cook-off one year on our behalf that's what we just said But then when uh, when I was with the newspaper, uh, that that's like the first thing that everybody uh, targets is, you know, you put special events on the calendar and the chili cook off is just right on the top of it because not only is it some place where the business entity or the bank or the newspaper 
or whatever organization you're working for can connect with the community, you could give to the Boys and Girls Club or other charitable organizations. You could have fun. It's a bonding activity for your team. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's also kind of like a competitive exercise yes. for you too. So it's like checks all the boxes there. Um, so d Chili Cook-Off, you actually outgrew the location that you were at at Havert Finn mm -hmm. a few years ago. Um, and now you've moved to the um, Clover the Clover Park. Park. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew the location. Yep. I just couldn't remember the name because it changes. Yes. Um, but um, Clover Park, and you've moved it to October mm -hmm. because it's it's outside mm -hmm. and the summer is kind of tough. Yeah, uh, for an outside event. And it's such a great venue for community partners to come to, not just because of the space, but it is such a universal location for the county, mm -hmm. I feel like. Yeah. And um, it offers so many more opportunities for entertainment. And like this year, the St. Lucie Mets are um, hosting a car show outside the, um, the stadium on the same day that we're doing uh, the oh, Chili Cook-Off. Oh, that's fantastic. So there'll yeah. be like added elements this year that we haven't had in the past. The car show, we have live music this year. Um, and of course you have all the things we've been doing in the past, the chili contest, the jello uh, eating contest for the kids. Um, art displays, all that fun stuff. It's a lot easier to clean up, I bet, yes. in an outdoor venue. <laughs> but also in past years, I've seen as people companies build their booths sometimes they're limited by being in an indoor space and there'll be no limitations with clover park so it's really exciting you're already gathering teams you probably already have a number of teams that are not only signed up but planning their activity should we just go right into the chili cook-off and talk a little bit about that to begin with of course um our theme this year is going to be around the world so each one of our teams is representing a country, which opens up another other oh my box gosh, there. So yeah. we're going to add one more box to your list yes. of things that we're clicking. And we are encouraging all of our community here in St. Lucie County that has gotten bigger and bigger. I mean, yeah. it's amazing to see how many constructions are happening everywhere yeah. to bring their own culture and where they are from and share that with their community. So if you have maybe a little business like... Um, you import products from Poland or you import products from Colombia and you want to put your business out there, this is a great opportunity for you to create a team, mm -hmm. get to connect to your community, show off your culture, show off some of your products and just enjoy the fun. Or maybe even if it's not your business direction, um, maybe if it's your heritage and mm -hmm. your cultural, like, yes. like if, you know, there are a number of people on your team that are Italian and, you know, you want to serve meatballs as mm -hmm. your, your fun red. That fits right in with mm -hmm. chili because you right. use the same meat for it. Well, not exactly the same meat, but close enough. <laughs> but I think that does add the element, the around the world element gives you the opportunity to theme your chili mm -hmm. and I think that's something mm -hmm. that maybe they haven't Didn't done in the past. Didn't even think about that. Yeah yes. so you could definitely have certain cultural spins on your recipes um, and have a little more fun with that aspect of the contest. Now I know in the past with the chili cook-off that you've only allowed one uh, one team to have a, a particular theme theme yeah so uh, which what th what countries are already taken there's i know there's poland um there is mexico i believe is taken it's italy is taken colombia is taken mm -hmm. um there's some big ones out there that haven't been taken though that i'm surprised um like brazil and ireland Ooh, and like ireland there's some really festive ones fun. out there that france yeah. Kind of England. I mean, there's so many. Cliff, do you know what WPSL is doing? I have no idea. Oh, we'll uh, have to check the, with the meeting Carol hasn't been scheduled yet. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, we better get on that because if we want to pick something. Now, I'm not saying that they don't know. What oh, we're they just do haven't yet. told you. They, they haven't got to meet. They haven't <laughs> got to meet yet. 
Gotcha. I'm too busy to be told anything. Everything I got to find out. Yes. In progress or just on air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, the the other element that it adds to it is more of an educational element for the families that are visiting the mm -hmm. chili cook-off because not only are they going to have fun, they're going to play games, they're going to be giving to charity, they're going to get to compete in the jello eating contest and uh, taste chili from around the world, but they're also probably going to get the opportunity, opportunity to learn about different countries all around the world too. That is correct. I'm very excited about that. Um, because I've seen it when I go to the clubs and I get to talk to some of our youth and you kind of ask them like you know where this country is or you know the name of this country tell me a name of our country that is not your country and they go and start naming state and you go like ah no, why no, are we not yes. Yes. <laughs> so I am expecting for a lot of our club members to come and join the phone as well yeah. and come and get to see what we meant when we talk about Italy or Germany or Poland that some of the countries have been taking so far and you're gonna see them as as every year do right they put all the credit out there so they're probably gonna be wearing outfits oh right yeah, and it's yeah. gonna be all decorated so they're yeah. gonna get to travel a little bit and they're gonna have a passport <gasps> so oh, you get to cool. check your passport to get your stamp in your passport like you're traveling yeah. you're gonna get it in each one of the moves what fun Ooh, yes. what fun so is canada taken yet i don't think so i don't think, so. So I, I don't think we have, I, yeah yeah, Epcot. yeah it'll yes. be like like a mini epcot no not that i'm from canada or anything but just there's a lot of fun things that we could do yeah. and i know that greg's going to want to do something that is sports themed so yeah, I can well, see that. Well, I can see where open. you're going yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, that would be kind of fun. Limited, well, of we'll course, see. to countries that play baseball and football as we know them. <laughs> <laughs> that that may be may be possible as well too, but um, so that's coming up in October, um, October 22nd at Clover Park. But again, you know, the preparations are already on on underway if people want to get more information about joining a team or starting a team or um just in general put it on their I'm calendar bring it here sponsorships we have oh, some yeah. exclusive <laughs> opportunities for sponsorships so if you are listening and you're like oh maybe i'm not that good of a cook and but i do want to join and i don't know what will be the best way to join the event we have still the welcome booth sponsor we have the t-shirt sponsor we have the chili sampler kit sponsor all of those are exclusive so you will not share your space with anybody else it will be all for you and we have the contest sponsor for kit games and the kit zone sponsor so there's still a, a good amount of yeah. sponsorships there is available for and you to join spots as well if, if any of the businesses want to make a team, we also have spots for that. As is there going to well. be a limit to the number of teams? Yes. yes we're only is. having 30 teams this okay. year. So it is limited, but there's a couple still left. So, so there's a competition just in that alone. And yes. you can get all the information. Well, well, uh, I, the website has information, and there's mm -hmm. a tab for Chili Cook-Off that you could get more information. But also, if you haven't already on your social media followed Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County um, or um, friended them, what, whatever <laughs> you do. The Instagram is follow. Yep. Uh, but you can also follow on Facebook, too, mm -hmm. because when you see the stuff they post, then you're immediately up to the minute with everything that's going on mm -hmm. and with last minute changes or special events as they post um, because uh, you already have you know things that are coming up and we're talking about an October event now mm -hmm. but between now and October there's a ton of other things and we're going to talk about them here as well that's right uh -huh. we do have uh leading up to chili cook-off we have uh the boo bash game at the saint lucie mets so it's um the saint lucie mets are taking on the uh palm beach cardinals i believe on saturday august 27th that's at clover park and that is a saint lucie mets game that'll benefit boys and girls clubs and it's sort of like our kickoff to chili cook-off um because we start really getting the word out we start fundraising all that fun stuff so there will be 
50-50 raffle. There will be trick-or-treating, um, costume contest, all of that stuff at the game itself. And this is going to be in August. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you have kids that are already ready to pick out their <laughs> Halloween yeah. costume and figure out what they're going to wear, then this is right up your alley. Yeah, or if you're like me and you want to wear three different outfits and you can't pick one, <laughs> here's a good chance to wear yeah. a second outfit. Yes. That's where I am too. I'm a big yes. Halloween fan, so having any excuse to wear a costume, sign me in, please. Yes. I'll be jumping on it. And what a very special thing that we also do uh, that um, – game is that the players will wear a costume BGC jersey that will be auctioned off to benefit mm -hmm. B the Boys and Girls Club. So it, it has a drawing from our kids in it, mm -hmm. in the design, which is mm -hmm. really, really cool. I said this year I'm gonna I'm gonna try to auction and win one because yes. I, I kind of want to wear it to the games when I go to the games. Well, yeah. if all the players are wearing them, then there's a few different chances that you have to win them. That's right, you have enough there for a couple of people to go compete yes. and donate some money for a very good cause. Again, we've got the whole competition thing going yes. on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, so that's coming up on August 27th at Clover Park. And, you know, you'll get to see the St. Lucie Mets uh, play the Palm Beach Cardinals, but you'll also get to trick or treat and you'll get to, uh, be part of a costume contest and there'll be a lot of fun, pre-Halloween, yes. pre-chili cook-off activities. Actually, you know, if you think about it, you know, you're talking about multiple Halloween costumes. You really, you've got the August 27th thing you can do. You can wear something else for the chili cook-off that fits in yep. with your country. And then uh, a week later for Halloween, you've got your third <laughs> costume right there. And we are going to host Halloween at our West Side campus. We are going to have a trunk or treat. And um, we don't want to spoil too many details yes. yet. But it's going to be very big. Um, we are hoping this is going to be the place to go in Halloween trunk or treaty. So you have four costumes. You'll need four <laughs> costumes this year. Or <laughs> if you're a parent or a grandparent and listening to this and your kids are little, you can use the same costume on your kid. Yes. They won't know the difference. They'll be so excited to keep wearing it. I know when my children were little, they liked to um, sleep in their Halloween <laughs> costumes the week before. <laughs> um, very little, if, <laughs> if they're listening to this, this show, because they're grown up now and they don't like me to talk, tell stories about when they're little. So um, you've got that coming up on August 27th. And um, as St. Lucie County goes back to school, uh, you have the different programs that people can sign up for their kids for their for their after school and before school activities and they can sign up now that's correct we do have 23 locations throughout the county 15 of them are school within the same school so you'd even have to pick up your um, kid to bring it to the aftercare program we are right there for them we are um, oriented on trying to support the power hour which it all depends if we go back to having homework or not the last two years we have not have hot homework to do by county decision let's see what's going to happen this year um, but it, whether they do have the homework or not we are still going to reinforce some of those um, learn um, experiencing habits that, yes, yeah. yes, that they had at school but we also going to reinforce sport programs um, creativity, doing arts and crafts. So it is not just a place where your kids are going to burn time. It's going to be a place where your kids are going to get invested, mm -hmm. feel safe, and have fun with other friends. And all of that is, is really important, but it is also nice too as a parent to know that if your kids are attending one of these programs, that they're going to have fun. They're going to get in enrichment activities. They'll part maybe participate in sports or recreational activities, but they'll usually also you'll usually come home with their homework completed too. And you know, it's been quite a few years since I did uh, math 
uh, especially middle school and high school yes. uh, math and uh, the the homework helpers that you have are much closer to when they they first learn that stuff they remember i remember teaching my kids the way that i learned math and having them go that's not the way we do it in school you don't know what you're talking about mom but the relief of of parents and grandparents uh, knowing that your kids are coming home and that's one less thing you have to stress about and you don't have to get into a fight with them about did you do your homework yet because you know they're they're coming home with with that done and then also if you have that whole guilt trip thing going on where you're feeling like your kids aren't getting to do some extracurricular activities mm -hmm. that's built right into the boys and girls club program too and they're getting a warm meal as well uh, and so yeah. so really we're checking all the boxes <laughs> again i love it um so between um in in, in august you have uh wh what do you have going on you have got the signups going on for that mm -hmm. after school program um and as you you said uh two-thirds of the program are right there at the school location and then you have the clubhouses too mm -hmm. uh, how do people how do parents and grandparents sign their kids up for those programs we do have all of our club locations listed on our website um, that's bgc of slc.org um, and you can go to the clubs to sign your um, child the registration yep yeah, fill out the registration forms um, it's super simple um, and then they can get started right away, pretty much. That's correct. So you have a registration form online where you can fill it up. Mm -hmm. And the next step that will happen just to have some parents and um, legal guardians and be ready for this is that you're going to receive a call back saying we received your registration and the next step is you're going to receive an email that will set you up for a part of portal where we are trying to make it very easy to make the payments for registration and monthly payments so or weekly good. payments sorry and uh it, it's really easy no-brainer after school activities for your kids uh, and the kids love it and th they also make lifelong friends mm -hmm. as part of it because uh, when they're in school even if they're going to a, a, an after school program there at their own school they're still um, they're getting to interact with people that may not be in their classroom or may not be in their particular grade mm -hmm. uh, but have common interests with them mm -hmm. and it's kind of training them under the best of circumstances to be able to pick your friends mm -hmm. I think I think it's a wonderful opportunity for kids and of course you've got all the information on the website and you can sign up there to make it really easy um, Registration is open right now, but if you have questions and you don't find the time, we also want to know we are going to be at all, all of the open houses at uh, the schools as well. So if mm -hmm. you find yourself in that last minute spot, I, I remembered I had to do this, but you know, work is beating me, so I don't have the time. We will be at the open house. We will have registration forms there as well. So if you want to fill it up then, you're welcome to do it there as well. And uh, the, the schools that you're in and a part of our elementary and k-8s correct correct yes uh, but our clubhouses serve k through 12 like 12 through, 18. through high school yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but of course because that's where the youth of the year programs come in and then yeah. your work work development programs yeah. uh, so if people want to sign their high school kids up for it is, do you go through the same so you go and fill the registration form as well and you will specifically look for those club houses would be west side percy peak Kemperit unit chalk hill and um all of them have also transportation from the high schools to the club so we still have in a way to facilitate where the parent doesn't have to go pick up the kid to bring it to the club mm -hmm. they just get transportation from the school to us let's take just a minute and divide it up port st lucie through Fort Pierce because you know when you say Percy Peak where that is mm -hmm. yes but Percy Peak is located in Fort Pierce correct mm -hmm. 
And uh, what's the west side is also in four piers. Okay. And then the Camp Pruitt and the Chalk Hill are in Port St. Lucie. Are in Port St. Lucie. So yeah. you'll know which ones to to lean toward. Um, your west side, west side campus, that's fairly new to the big picture and it's really given uh, both the team and the kids at Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County an opportunity to get involved in more community activities than ever before because you're able to host things. Um, we so are, yeah, we are aiming to, to offer that world-class club and Westside has been the biggest opportunity we've got to be able to offer that to our kids. So it is is a facility that offers, that's where we have our kitchen. That's where our, our workforce ready teens can, can work on the culinary program. We have the gym. We just opened the cheap and pot. So our kids and teens get the opportunity to, to learn some basic skills from golf. And we have- And that's at the West Side yeah. location as That's well right. all of that is is within the west side location that's mm -hmm. that's really exciting that they're gonna and west side serves k through 12. correct so, so we have the two houses. different buildings though yeah. we yeah. have the buildings for the kids where they get for to spend and create their own safe space and we have the building for the teens where they don't feel we're treating them like kid and they don't feel like they were coming to a daycare they feel they are coming to a place they want to belong and where they feel like they can um, grow. be listened, yeah, to, and just have a platform to grow. And they, they're thriving over there. The teens at Westside, they've got their new innovation uh, room. They're podcasting. They've got all these gaming rooms. They're, the teens have a really great setup that they've sort of cultivated themselves um, just by, you know, being – really communicative on what they're looking for and what areas they want to grow in and what kind of careers they're interested in. And um, they're very passionate about it and it's something that they choose to be there, so. You mentioned early on the the fact that the uh, young adults especially have a buy-in on, you know, what's offered. They get to to, to express what, what they want to see. And do the programs change from year to year? So we have some programs that are established and they're going to belong to, like the Youth of a Year program is going to always be there. We have the Torch Club, which also is going to always be there. Keystones also always going to be there. What is Keystones? Is that it is leadership? It is. It? All of them are kind of involved with leadership in different ways. Um, they're trying to cultivate them, having a platform and speaking up for the community and understanding how to use structure and organize like, um, like I'm almost gonna say like political organization. So you have your like president, your, vice yeah. president and your committee. Like a student government style mm -hmm. kind yeah. of thing. Um, and those are always gonna be there because those are key to developing certain skills that they need. But we are also opening for different ways for them to learn and develop those workforce readiness skills, which is where those virtual um, kind of games are coming yeah. on. Um, they can do like the virtual reality career exploration and all kinds of. Career exploration, does that change from club to club, the type of exploration, the type of careers they're exploring? I believe each one of those of our teen clubs have like their a different focus. Yes, yes. So like their cool. their club director and their teens have their needs. Yes. And like again, we're saying over and over, we listen to them, so they have like different interests. For for example, we do have at Percy Peak our music studio where they get mm -hmm. to record um, doing beats which is the name of a music studio yeah, or, or singing or doing poetry mm -hmm. and that's something that they feel a huge need for and that's why that is in that club while we are west side have all the gaming and the virtual reality and that's what it's going over there so it is a little different because we are trying to tend to their needs y you know one thing that i want to make a point of saying when you're talking about gaming if people are listening to the show you're not talking about the kids sitting on their butts 
and just playing games. You're talking about a learning activity where they're learning to develop those games. To develop Sorry. some skills. I was just listening to our CEO um, share that he was watching one of our club members wearing the virtual reality um, headset. headset, yes. And she was trying to learn how to cut wood. So she was learning, learning construction skills from the virtual reality headset. Wow, that's yeah. very cool. Yes. yes. Now, d so, but she didn't have any wood in front of her at all. Mm -hmm. She nope. was just learning the skills. Mm -hmm. Correct. And she was using her hands. And she was going through the motions, and it felt like it was right there. Yeah. And that's what this virtual reality gives you the opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. Just live through some of those kind of trade more mm -hmm. skills that you know, will be a little more complicated to get a facility to include all the trades. Well, you can have that technology that will give you an option to expand and go wide. Just mm -hmm. ask for what they are interested in and just try to make that happen. Does the community get involved in um, after school activities too? What, what if somebody is really good at drumming or dancing or uh, sewing or something like that is there a place for them to get involved to help we, bring that program to your kids yes we do uh, we love to partner with um, businesses and local leaders and people throughout the county um, there's always opportunities to get involved um, and we kind of try to cater it to our partners um, we also have a lot of opportunities for sort of like a career day speaker type of situation mm -hmm. we did that quite a bit this summer um, we had speakers like Travis Leonard from A&G Pools come and speak to our teens. And a lot of times... Well, by the way, I, I just wanted to mention that A&G Pools is the main sponsor for yes, Chili Cook-Off. Yes, they are the presenting yep, yes, sponsor yeah, for Chili yeah. Cook-Off. Um, so, you know, partners like that are really crucial in our teens' development because... Not only do they shed light on different career paths and different businesses, but they also oftentimes get involved with our teens. They offer, um, you know, summer jobs or internships and things like that. So there are a lot of different ways that local businesses and community leaders can get involved. And, and even during the course of the school year, too, I know uh, a young lady, she's that I watched grow up Taylor Hoskins who's now a local a attorney uh, following in her dad Steve Hoskins footsteps um, is very involved with the Boys mm -hmm. and Girls Club as a matter of fact on your board of directors but she also has an intern mm -hmm. uh, has interns on a regular basis mm -hmm. that are bringing th they're not just uh, young adults who are shadowing mm -hmm. them and watching what they do they actually are helping out at a law office and man that's going to look <laughs> awesome on those teenagers yes. resumes when they go on to uh, on their college applications or when they maybe move on to law school applications Yes, and I, I have to mention as well that Taylor Hoskins is actually the Chili Cook-Off event chair. So we're <gasps> just checking her. all those boxes. But um, uh, I believe uh, we've had interns, an intern that um, she was a club member. She was a youth of the year. She worked a little bit with Taylor, and now she's actually interning, I believe, with Diamond Liddy, um, the public defender. So, she, you know, there's always different paths for our teens to take in different ways for them to get involved with the businesses. It's truly a mutual partnership. I think that's something really cool that we get to work on. Okay, if Taylor Hoskins is chairing the Chili Cook-Off, is Hoskins bringing back their peanut butter pie that they sell at the Chili Cook-Off? <laughs> we are trying to make that happen. Okay, <laughs> because there is not been another peanut butter pie that I've tasted that is better and they they sold as their fundraiser mm -hmm. there at the chili cook-off they sold either slices or whole pies mm -hmm. that you could bring home and yeah. i'm just j j i can't wait till october <laughs> just yeah. to get a, a piece of that pie um and uh the i think this is just really a good example of how you 
work with the community, you work with community members and they grow into board members and into mentors mm -hmm. for, for your students. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that, you know, we've seen that with Travis Leonard um, and we've seen that with uh, Taylor Hoskins. What other people stand out that are? Uh, we are working currently with Cleveland Clinic and we are trying to make um, internship happen as well with them. We know there is a huge need out there for our health industry. Right. And we have the seats. We have all these teens, all these kids that if we, you know, show them and open the opportunity for them to see what the world is like and how many different options are in a health industry, um, I'm sure that we're gonna connect there to help them grow as well. That's something happening. And so that that's down the road, looking at developing those health occupations and the partnerships uh, with Cleveland Clinic. And uh, there's a lot, uh, the, the Chili Cook-Off is renowned because it is one of your major fundraisers, if not the major fundraiser that you, you hold. And of course, the way that it works is the different teams sign up to be a part of it and they pick their theme and then all year round they compete mm -hmm. in a way by the fundraiser they choose to do which could be as little as selling candy bars at their office all year round uh, which that would go with switzerland oh yeah okay yes. <laughs> which i don't think switzerland's taken okay yeah that would be kind That'd of be a good idea out there yeah. Yeah. yeah they can do um Dinners at restaurants is one of the popular mm -hmm. one. Um, they do raffle baskets with certain prizes. Um, they do or they do a combination, day. yeah. Oh yeah. Or they do a combination, combination of things. I know a lot of the government uh, organizations do things like a regular jeans day mm -hmm. on whatever Friday, and so people have to pay, and then the money goes to their chili chili cook-off yeah. fund so they compete um as a for the chili cook-off they compete in fundraising they compete in cooking chili, chili. they compete and what are some of the other ways they the compete booths are a pretty big deal okay. um the booth decorations are all very extreme they're very fun very themed to uh, for this year it'll be their country so and literally the sky's the limit yes, this year. <laughs> yeah, really. So they um, they get an opportunity to showcase their all around uh, booth uh, with their booth decoration. So that's another category that they get judged okay. on. And then um, do you still have Little Miss Chili Pepper? Yes, yes, we still do have um, the competition on Little Miss Chili Pepper and Mr. Pee-wee. Pee -wee. Yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, something like that. Yeah. So we are trying to, and we we also going to have performances. Um, so we have the Lindsay School of Art, the BGC dance team is going to perform, the drumline performance, the taekwondo performance. And this year, again, another opportunity that changing location give us, we're going to have the Humane Society Pet Adoption Station as well. That's awesome. Yes. So there'll be a lot of different things that you can check out all at once. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a day event. Mm -hmm. Does it go on into the night as well? From no, 11 a.m. to 4 okay. p.m. Okay. Of course, there's a baseball game that night probably no no nope, nope. not that the st lucy season ends early september okay. so if we get the okay. whole place the car show and chili cook off oh that's yes. awesome so uh so from 11 to 4 october 22nd put it on your your calendar if you haven't already and think about uh, putting a team forth you can also i i know in past years um sometimes you know you don't want to make the commitment to do everything yourself and i i've seen a lot of uh, businesses partner up together uh, i am so glad you brought that up because i was about to tell for people out there that do not want to do all the job mm -hmm. but they feel like they maybe want to get involved we do have our workforce readiness teen culinary program wants to have a team but they need somebody to ah. sponsor them 
Yeah. So if you want to see your teens and taste their chili and what they learn through the year, this will be a great opportunity to you become like you know you godfather sponsor, or godmother to them. Yeah. Yes. yes, you can sponsor, uh, but Italy's already taken for the godfather. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, so you can sponsor, get your name out there, yeah. uh, pay for the team, and and have the kids do all the work. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. That's a great idea. Um, and I know in the past, you know, the radio station, we we've partnered with, with other organizations and we've also done it on our own. Um, I go so far back that my 29 year old son um, competed in the little Mr. Pee Wee oh. when he was like four or five years old. Um, so that was quite some time ago. The, but this is the 40th year that's coming up. Mm -hmm. It's an amazing anniversary, and we can just not say this enough. This is our largest community event, mm -hmm. no questions asked. This is where we truly show uh, St. Lucie County that it takes a village to help this community grow, and everybody puts a little part in it. Uh, you know, one of the things that is new-ish to the that the, you've always had the chili eating contest, but the jello eating contest for kids. Mm -hmm. I love that you're doing that too because it's so much fun see, seeing people eat jello <laughs> anyhow. It is. I think it's a little more fun than seeing people eat chili. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree. And so you'll have the opportunity to do both of those. And of course, you're also going to have your trick-or-treating mm -hmm. which you can say use the same costume you did August 27th or pull something else out of your closet um, do you have the opportunity to do whatever whatever you'd like I, if you are interested in sponsoring and not actually doing the work of having a team you've got the opportunity to sponsor mm -hmm. uh, the uh, the youth the boys and girls club youth is there anything else that we haven't covered that you ladies would like to add sure there is one other opportunity for you to participate as well which is being a vendor so if you don't want to participate exactly in the competition part of a chili um but you do want to have a presence because you want to be there physically to talk to all this community coming which we estimate it would be about anything from five thousand to ten thousand people um, this is your chance. We are all going to be there having a great time, having fun. We are planning for people to stay all day long if they want to. So becoming a vendor will be another great way to join. So just to reiterate, just to go over the important things, uh, although every word we've said <laughs> in this show has been important, uh, that you can find all of this information on the website, which is... B G C of S L C dot org. Mm -hmm. um, and you can find the different tabs with information whether you want your kids to sign up for an after school program or you want to be a part of Chili Cook Off or you want to just volunteer. If you want to find out more about the um, other programs that Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County offers too. Uh, you can go to the website, uh, like them on Facebook, yes. follow them on Instagram, lots of good information, and then you'll have the most up-to-date information you, you can get. Uh, the Chili Cook-Off is coming up um, Saturday, October 22nd at Clover Park this year. It's a daytime outdoor event, and it's presented by a g uh, pools is the the main presenter this year uh, back to school enrollment is going on right now yes. and how many total clubs did you say 23 correct yes. wow 23 clubs uh, clubhouses and school sites both you can sign up online uh, you got the boo bash coming up and not you don't have to wait till October for your Halloween <laughs> fix for that because that's coming up on Saturday August 27th um, also at Clover Park and that's the one that's going to be part of the game yes yes, yes. so uh, and then you'll also be able to uh, bid on custom 
Boys and Girls Club jerseys that are going to be auctioned off to benefit Boys and Girls Club. And this is the first time you've done something like this, right? Last year, we also oh, did the did. auction in other shirts, yes. Yes. I think usually we've had boo we've had halfway to Halloween in the past, and then last year it was Boo Bash. So, um, yeah, I think it's a standing tradition, and we're excited to continue that, that partnership with the Mets. Well, yeah. I was having so much fun at the Mets Stadium last year. I <laughs> promise you, you will have fun. Yes. And that's uh, Saturday, August 27th, and the first pitch is at 610 p.m. but the activities will start a little bit before that right correct yes we'll be already there if yeah if you want to watch baseball away. you <laughs> want to you want to come a little bit early and and check things out um it's the st lucy mets versus the palm beach cardinals and you know uh, it's got to be said too uh, casey and the st lucy mets have done such a wonderful job I'm um, partnering with Boys and Girls Club. You just enlightened me. Yes, she is one of the persons who have helped one of our club members grow. We actually have one of our club members being an intern there during the summer, doing the... She's the on-field host. Yes. Oh, how exciting for yes. her. Essence. It's yeah. It's been so much fun seeing her there. Like every time we've been to any of the games and I see her doing her thing, I feel so so proud of seeing her <laughs> holding that mic and getting that crowd all hyper about the game. So it's like you you guys have a thousand kids. Each. Yeah. <laughs> That's is. awesome. And of course the youth leadership program, which is really uh, a wonderful opportunity. Uh, the the uh, youth of the year program. Uh, and th what's the time period with that? When, or when the kids get back, they start Deciding. They start preparing for it, and our first competitions to start in October. Okay, so they're going to start preparing right away. So if your kids are interested in being a part of that, then you can sign them up and, and be a part of that as well. And that has to be at one of the club sites. You've been listening to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. I've had Marissa Capus. I said it wrong that time. Marissa Kappas. <laughs> Kappas. I knew as soon as I said yes. it, I was wrong. <laughs> and Gabby Simpson from the Boys and Girls Club of St. Lucie County have been my guests. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. We'll see you back here next week with more. The Sue Ellen Sanders Show. Weekends on WPSL. Visit WPSL.com. Click on Programming Schedule and find the Sue Ellen Sanders Show all weekend long, usually several times during the weekend. So get a chance to do that. Check it out. Binge watches some Sue Ellen Sanders show. This is WPSL, Port St. Lucie. The talk of the Treasure Coast, webcaster to the world on Google Home, Alexa, and the TuneIn app on your smartphone.